Thank you for joining me today for the I Am Mom Summit. My name is Sheree Miller, and I'm a writer and illustrator of picture books. These are my two picture books, Don't Touch My Hair and Princess Hair. Don't Touch My Hair is the story of Aria, a young girl with an afro and a lot of admirers. We follow her through the story as she learns to stand up for herself, and we teach kids a valuable lesson about consent and personal boundaries. And Princess Hair is more of a fun story that shows the beauty and diversity of natural hair. Growing up, I always loved princesses, but there were never any that looked like me or had hair like mine, especially. So I really wanted to make a book that showed different girls with different hairstyles, just having fun and being joyful and showing that all girls are princesses, no matter what their hair looks like. Both of these books are very personal to me. They really speak to my creative voice and the message that I want to really get out there. And when I'm creating art, I like to step back and look at what inspires me, what causes an emotional response from me, and really create from that place. I also create and share art online which is mostly geared towards women and also towards children, especially mothers, because I like to show beautiful, diverse women in like fun, colorful outfits, having fun with their children, having fun with their friends, really kind of like frolicking through life. Like the way that I see women out in the world is the way I want to display them on my social media. You can see some of my work featured here. I try to infuse humor and encourage self-care and self-love through my art. My art has also been featured on packaging. I've illustrated chapter books. I've also illustrated t-shirt graphics. I always forget. Um, which I also try to incorporate like fun and colorful diverse characters. Now I have to be creative for a living so I understand that being creative can be tough especially when you run into a creative block or even if you're just starting for the first time. So that's why I wanted to talk to you today about five tips on finding your creative voice. Now your creative voice is the way that you see and interpret the world and how you express yourself creatively with it. This can come up in many different mediums. You can take photos, you can write stories, you can even come up with creative solutions in your office place. Because when you incorporate your imagination with your perspective, that's really your creative voice. And being able to find that is very important to be able to start seeing the world differently and coming up with creative ways to solve your problems. So today we're going to be talking about five tips to do that. So tip one is inspiration. The way that you start to find your creative voice is obviously finding what you like. What do you see that inspires you? What's a song that gets stuck in your head? What's a show that you binge watch like the night before, even when you have to wake up early? What's a book that you can't put down? These are things that resonate with you personally. And I think it's very important to investigate why these things resonate with you. Pinpoint what it is about the thing. Is it the character? Is it the story? Is it the perspective that they're giving? What do you identify with it the most? And what can you add to it by adding your own personal perspective? I'm very inspired by obviously picture books, graphic novels, movies, anything that really tells a story really speaks to me, which is why I really enjoy expressing my creative voice through writing and pictures. Illustration is telling stories with pictures. So that is my main avenue of expressing my creative voice. Now I try to like do this in different ways, either with illustrated text or mostly characters. I love love drawing characters. And that's also what I resonate with the most. If a show has a very interesting character or 
if I see someone's illustration and the character just looks fun and full of life, that's really what draws me in, catches my attention and makes me want to continue to look at that. So that is really where the way I approach my art is very character driven. It's very story driven and it's what keeps me motivated and sparks my interest. So make sure that when you're out in the world and you see something that makes you stop and inspires you, you stop and really dig into that. Maybe investigate it more. Maybe like look up other things that are connected to it. Like if you're really into Greek mythology because you like saw a show about it and you really go in and like investigate like the actual stories of Greek mythology, maybe you want to make something that's inspired by that. Um, the next step in finding your creative voice is experimentation. You really want to try any different avenue, especially when you're starting out, to figure out what really resonates with you. Like what do you like to work with? Do you like working with your hands? Do you like writing? Are you clean? Are you dirty? Are you messy? Like really just go and express yourself in any way that you can think of. And you don't have to share any of this work with anybody. You can really keep it. It's really like a personal work that you have to do to really find the way that you express yourself creatively. Like I mostly work in watercolor on paper. I've worked on this way for a long time. I've started to add in different things like um, colored pencils into my work. And like I experiment with different pens, but recently I've gone completely left field and tried digitally illustrating. This is very new for me. I've put it off for so long. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I can like digitally illustrate, but you know, with things like the iPad, it still feels it's digital, but it feels a little more hands-on. You can hold it, you can carry it, you can take it with you. So that's something that I've been experimenting with recently. I've had to do a lot of art before I've made some that I liked so I wasn't really sharing it like I'll share a few that I'm like oh this actually came out pretty good but a lot of it is like internal work that I'm like doing behind the scenes I'm not really sharing with anyone and I think it's very important when you're finding your creative voice that you know sorry about that that you know that you don't have to share it if you're not ready and you don't have to feel like you need external validation to feel like you're being creative. Creative work can be completely internal. It doesn't have to be shared. But if you want to share it, that's also fun. Getting other people's reactions to things really helps you grow. So experimenting is really about finding what works and what doesn't work and learning from your successes and your failures because it's all about learning. Your creative process is like a just a long, long learning process. Um, the third step in finding your creative voice is don't say no to yourself. I think that self-doubt is really the death of creativity. Like it will stop you before you start. It will make you second guess yourself every step of the way. But I think being able to push past that and finding, especially this one, experimentation comes in, like being able to work on things on your own will also help you like strengthen your feelings on like what you're creating and being and having that inspiration behind it actually feeling motivated to do something I feel like can help quash that um, a feeling of self-doubt that can like stop us sometimes I will stop myself so many times before starting new stories or before drawing an illustration. I'll be like, who wants to see this? Oh, this already exists in the world. What can I add to this conversation? But then whenever I push through it, which I, I try to do every time, but when I do, I never regret like exploring a new idea or trying a new medium or talking about like a topic that I might, might not know as much about, but I'm interested in and I have a different perspective on. Cause like my voice and your voice can add to a conversation and saying no to yourself will stop you before you even start to add to that conversation. And the world is, will be missing your unique perspective if you're not able 
to push past that initial feeling of, oh, should I do this? Step four in finding your creative voice is finding your why. Why do you want to make things? Why do you want to be creative? Why do you want to say what you have to say? I think having that initial why backing up your creativity will help you if you come against any pushback or any like unhelpful feedback or negative feedback, knowing that you're creating for a purpose, even if that purpose is just to have fun. I feel like having that in mind when you're creating helps you have that motivation that pushes you towards your goal of being creative. Even when, even if you're playing a game or like doing yoga recreationally, like what is your goal? To be more flexible, to feel better, to have a better sense of self. You enter everything with a goal in life, even if it's something you're doing casually. So approaching your creative process or finding your creative voice, you should also have a goal in mind. Like, why, what are you sharing? My creative goal is, or my why, is to create art that helps other people feel represented. Like I wasn't represented. I really want to fill that void that I felt that existed in my childhood or even now in my adult life. I want to make books that I wish that I had growing up and I want to make, I want to tell stories that I wish I could read and I want to see people moving through life the way I imagine them to. So I create a world of characters that are all happy and colorful and bright because that's what I want to see. And so many times I'll get feedback that people see themselves in my art, wish they had these books growing up. And it makes me so happy that my creative voice is able to reach out to people who also need to hear these things and see these things and that I can fill that space. So by finding your creative voice, you find the space that you can fill and only you can fill because of your unique perspective, your unique inspirations and your way of combining those things and expressing them. Tip number five, create what you want to see in the world. Like once you filter through your inspiration, start to experiment, don't say no to yourself. Now is time to create the thing that you wish that you had. The thing that you want to see, the thing that everyone else is missing, that only you notice, that you say, whoa, why doesn't this exist? Or even if it does exist, why isn't it done this way? What is your unique spin, your unique perspective, your creative voice? What can you add to the conversation? Like I said, I created these books because I saw a void. And every time that someone reaches out and says that they see themselves, I see, I like retroactively see, I push back to when I was doubting myself and creating things. And I say, see, this is why. This is why we create. And this is why we use our voice. So that we can tell the stories that other people don't know that they need, um, wish that they had, but don't have the means of doing so. Or didn't think were as important. But being able to use your creative voice to give voice to things that you find important that even though someone else might not find important, that is the best feeling. Your inspiration, personal experiences, and experiments all combine to form your creative voice. Your creative voice is what sets you apart from everyone else. Now, you may have to repeat the steps in this process more than once in order to find your creative voice because your creative journey isn't going to be a linear one. It's going to take trial and error and finding more things that don't work than do. But if you continue and persevere to finding your voice, your work might inspire someone, encourage them to find their voice, or just help them feel seen. Now, I hope this talk has helped jumpstart you guys on your creative process and you're inspired to go out there and create and start with the fun process of finding what inspires you. That's always the best part. 
I would like to thank you for joining me today. I would like to thank Mom Summit for having me again. And if you want to learn more about me and my art and my books, you can find me at shreemiller.com or you can follow me on social media at Coily and Cute. Thank you so much. Have a good day.